big time bantamweight title fight it's on the line we have the funk master aljamain sterling taking on that snake in the grass tj dillashaw in an all-time bantamweight matchup and if you told me that this fight was going to happen two or three years ago i couldn't contain myself i would have been like rock hard with an emotion i've got a phoner like jake hager when he was with bellator i absolutely love this pairing nonetheless you have the former two-time bantamweight champ dillashaw looking to make good and become a three-time champ that stuff doesn't happen all the time and for aljamain sterling prove the doubters wrong ourselves included and probably you as well unless you were an alumnus of Cortland or you know somebody on long island because man did sterling ever look good his last time out against piotr jan matt i mean he's looked good in his whole string of fights leading up to his title shot and of course him becoming champion but that's been the great thing about Aljamain Sterling it feels like he added to his game in segments as he's been a UFC fighter it's been really nice to see because for the longest part we knew how good his volume was we know how good his wrestling was but it really did feel like he was another case of a Gilbert Burns where it's like okay we know how skilled you are in every one area of mixed martial arts it'd be really nice for you to pull them all together though and after he did suffer that brutal knockout loss to Marlon Moraes and we're all gonna remember that he gets dropped by a punch the ref immediately stands him up he goes for a takedown, gets hit by a switch kick that kind of becomes a knee, and he gets flatlined. It's a really bad knockout loss, and it was one that made a lot of people reconsider if they ever thought Aljamain Sterling would be able to get to this point in the first place, but the run that he's been able to go on since that knockout loss of Brett Johns, Cody Stamen, Jimmy Rivera, Pedro Munoz, Corey Sandhagen, and Piotr Jan one and a half times, let's say, because the first one is disqualification. He more than justified his win over him the second time around, though. It's been really nice to see the evolution of skills throughout Aljamain Sterling. And the first fight that I want to bring up and that I feel like we have to bring up is the Corey Sandhagen submission Just win. Like... They're Corey, still dry. Corey Sandhag is as good as anybody like, in this division. He can offer a difficult fight to anybody in this division. And we know how good of a grappler he is. He's got out of bad positions in the past and then been able to make them work for himself. Aljamain Sterling doesn't let you get out of bad positions, though, and even prove that in the Yawn rematch. In the first Yawn fight, Aljo wasn't able to secure a lot of the takedowns, so we never really saw how good his grappling was going to be once the fight did hit the mat and we weren't just in these wrestling exchanges. But in the rematch, we saw how much of a handful Aljamain Sterling can be on the mat. Now, yes, he wasn't able to go out there and submit Piotr Yawn, but we saw the similar game that he showed in the Sandhagen fight, where if he gets you to the ground, if he gets your back, there's basically nothing you can do about it. Now, I would even put TJ Dillashaw into that category. He's a very good MMA grappler in his own right, but I don't think TJ Dillashaw's jiu-jitsu, at least, is on the level of a guy like Aljamain Sterling. No, Aljamain Sterling has great wrestling in MMA, but really, really good lights-out jiu-jitsu when it does come to the mat. Maybe you didn't see that against Piotr Jan, but that also goes to iron sharpening iron and skill for skill. Piotr Jan has pretty darn good submission defense but for tj dillashaw i've said this for a long stretch of time even before he went away best wrestler in mma to fit his skill set and when i look at tj dillashaw whether it's winning the belt the first time at ufc 173 finishing henna Barrow late in that fight and people are going to forget because henna went on a bj penn-esque run to end his ufc career Henna was the hotness at one point. He was that hotness. So Dillashaw beats him, takes on an unlikely title challenger in Joe Soto for his first defense, beats him, beats Brow a second he time. He kind of got lit up a little bit in that fight. Loses a split decision to Dominic Cruz, and then as he builds himself back up again, ends up dusting Cody Garbrandt, not without facing adversity in both of those fights, but beats Garbrandt two times in a row, faces Henry Cejudo at UFC on ESPN, Nombrero Uno, and a pre- and post-fight drug test was positive. When he cried about how the ref had stole the opportunity from him just for him to fail a drug test after, that's when I was like, oh, I'll break down TJ Dillashaw fights, but like, I don't care about Well, regardless, he did have a two-year suspension. He did serve that suspension. His last time out, he beat Corey Sandhagen. Obviously, injuries after that fight, that is the kind of crux of his layoff, and it's been just over a year since he fought Sandhagen. Again, that's a controversial fight. We talked about it. Matoush Gamrod, his last fight against Armin Zarukian. If you want to go back in time and watch our video on Darius and Gamrod. But the fight that Dillashaw had against Sandhagen, equally controversial. And I kind of thought Sandhagen won in the moment. It was one of those fights where, again, like my opinion on it doesn't matter. Either guy could have won. They're both really good. But if you just look at that fight and how both guys contested it, TJ had nothing for Corey on the feet in that fight. Let's just call it what it is. Like, Corey Sandhagen on the feet was a far better striker than TJ Dillashaw. But TJ was able to use his wrestling, be able to go to that well time after time after time, and really wrestle effectively against a guy like Corey Sandhagen. 
If he tries to do that against Dal Jermaine Sterling, though, I think he's getting absolutely schooled on the mat. And that's the thing about TJ. It really is going to come down to how does he choose to fight this fight? Because I'm going to disagree. Like, I don't think TJ is the greatest MMA wrestler of all time. I think he's a really good one. I think his I wrestling think, suits him. I think in his day, for a guy that came but, into MMA, obviously gets kind of entrenched the, the, the Mark Munozes and the, the Bang Ludwigs of the world. Dominic then, Cruz took him down, and they have a very similar background. My whole point is, TJ Dillashaw's been out grappled in the past. He is a really strong grappler, but I think he's almost the opposite that a lot of these really strong grapplers who have success on the feet have. People know how dangerous TJ Dillashaw is, so nobody has their hands down by their side. He throws head kicks and multiple combinations that then end in head kicks. I only do think with Dillashaw, and it's not that he's a bad wrestler, again, it's not that he's a bad grappler. I'm not trying to say that whatsoever. I just think the other part of his game is so good, it's so eye-catching, it's so talented, that then it helps him open up that other part of his game. And I'll admit the same on the flip side. Aljamain Sterling, think about his fight against uh, Pedro Munoz. Yeah, he got kicked in the legs a lot. Looked like a pretty damn good striker to me, though. He's throwing crazy amounts of volume, switching stances, throwing a long jab, using his own kicks. I think Sterling's the opposite. I think Sterling's striking looks a lot better in a lot of cases because guys are so worried about his grappling ability, and I think Dillashaw might almost be the opposite of that. That's all. I just, with Dillashaw, and a lot of people do like to say that he's one of the better MMA grapplers, I think he's really good, but the thing, or the reason he lost to Dominic Cruz the first time around, I know that was a split decision, but still, he got taken down by Dom a lot in that fight, and he wasn't able to then take down Dominic Cruz. For Sterling. Sterling, if you do look at it, he even had those same successes in the early rounds of the first fight against Piotr Jan. It's just, did he blow his load a little bit too early? Well, his pacing looked pretty damn good in the second fight. So if you do consider it for Dillashaw coming into this matchup fresh, he gets the opportunity to fight for the Bantamweight strap that he technically never lost in the past. You look at the odds in the matchup. Sterling opened the favorite, minus 220. Minus 170 right now for Dillashaw, who's gained open plus 185. Plus 142 as it stands. We have a look at the total topology vote. Surprise to us as they are to you. I'm going to say over under 67.5% for the champ. I think they'll be close to 50, so I'll say under. And they're just a little bit under. 1,285 total votes, 64% sterling, 64% by decision. You've got 28% by submission. For the 36% that have Dillashaw, 60% by decision, 33% by knockout. I think if Dillashaw wins this fight, he knocks out Aljamain Sterling. That'd be great. And I think if Sterling wins this fight, it's by decision or by submission. For Dillashaw, I don't know if it was like me trying to dance to Chattahoochee in high school and I'm missing a half beat, but for Dillashaw... You never knew how much that muddy water meant to you, did you? His striking just wasn't up to snuff or it wasn't what i was used to and again that could be ring rust does it exist i don't know his acl in the fight too but he also did tear that and if you look at it his wrestling was still there but for sterling younger fighter the two-time division two all-american out of Cortland, i I really do like how i've seen the level up from sterling whereas for dillashaw it was a two-year layoff now he looked pretty fucking good for a guy in a two-year layoff against Corey Sandhagen. But having said that, I do like Aljamain Sterling for the, the wealth of skills that he possesses here. My pick is Aljamain Sterling, but I want to get your opinion on this. I think this is the most favorable matchup for TJ Dillashaw out of anybody who could have the title right now. Killashaw? But, like, I think Pyotr Jan is a really hard matchup for TJ Dillashaw. Yeah. I think Marlon Vera, oddly enough, is a really hard matchup for TJ Dillashaw. Like, look how he was able to defend the takedown heads from Dominic Cruz and really make him pay with his power shots. Like, I think there's guys out there right now who are really difficult matches for TJ in a five-round atmosphere. And I think Aljo is too. Like, I'm picking Sterling in this fight for a reason. But I do think this is going to be a very close fight. And I could really see it coming down to, okay, we're tied 2-2 going into the fifth. Who's going to win this final round? Both guys have great cardio and have great uh, lasting ability in their fights. But I am ever so slightly going to pick Sterling. Let us know down below in the comment section who you have in this matchup will it be the funk master aljamain sterling will it be the california man tj dillashaw a big time main event coming up at lightweight charles Oliveira taking on islam makachev it should be a great fight keep it locked in with fight name picks we always say let's get into 